Environmental Protection Agency, Gina McCarthy. Thank, thank you, Welcome, Sam. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Madam Administrator, Gina, are you there? I am, Mr. Vice President. It's Hi. great to join you. How are you? Thank, thank you so much. Thank for, you. How about yourself? You've been busy. Yeah, we've been busy, and, and I'm very grateful to you for joining us in 24 Hours of Reality. And I am a huge fan of your work uh, at the EPA. Uh, I think you've done a spectacular job. I know I'm laying it on a little bit thick, but I've seen a lot of EPA administrators, and I, I really have a refined taste. I think you have done a spectacular job. And I'd like to start uh, the questions by just giving you kind of a, a chance to uh, tell us about how you would define the progress that you have made uh, while you've been serving as head of EPA under President Obama. Well, uh, let me just describe it as an administrative-wide progress, really, under the leadership of President Obama. He developed a climate action plan so that every agency in the U.S. was engaged in climate efforts. At a time of the economic downturn, he was investing in renewable and clean energy. And at this point, because of all of our actions and a lot of the work of EPA, we are at a point where our clean energy train has really left the station. Yeah. It is loaded with millions of Americans who understand climate is, change is happening and who really want to take action and who are benefiting from the actions we've taken. So I could describe some of those, but it ranges from everything to creating incentives and standards for, for uh, vehicles that can go farther on a tank of gas and significantly reduce their greenhouse gases with standards all the way out to 2025, to tackling oil, methane in the oil and gas sector, to our premier, uh, really, effort, which is our clean power plan. That's, that's already following this energy shift and not going to let that energy shift go backwards because we're really demanding significant reductions out to 2030. That's really going to spark innovation and continue this drive moving forward. Well, it's a great uh, agenda of accomplishment and progress. My second question is, what would you define as the biggest challenges our country has faced in reducing carbon emissions, and how are you overcoming those challenges? Well, Vice President, I think what we've seen is, and I've been doing this work for nearly as long as you have, <laughs> uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, right now the challenges, in the, the challenges of the past have really been about not having solutions. It's asking people to sacrifice in order to make progress moving forward. I think that dynamic has changed considerably. People are willing to tackle these issues. They are, the actions are happening, and the solutions are on the table. But as you and I know, as far as we've already gone to address our, our climate challenge, we need to keep that commitment forward. We need to have grassroots organizations work at the local level, work at the state level, that continue to drive those reductions forward in actions. Because while we're, we're doing great, we need to get more reductions on the table moving forward. That's going to take a heavy lift by everybody and, and increasing uh, money and research in, in the business sector in terms of innovation and new solutions being driven into the marketplace. That's what's going to have to happen. And so I know that we've done great, but we have a big job ahead of us. And every level of government and, and individuals really need to engage in this effort. Yeah, I'd like to focus for a minute on the role of state governments. Uh, the Clean Power Plan, in a way, kind of lets states take control of reducing carbon emissions. What was your yeah. strategy uh, in developing a state-by-state -state approach? And how did the EPA work with states and the other stakeholders to help states achieve those goals? Well, I think if you look at this, Vice President, one of the most exciting things is the engagement we used with the states and with individuals everywhere as we designed this strategy. We used the Clean Air Act, which you know is one of the most solid, long-lasting laws in our country, so that we were making sure that we had a very solid legal and science record um, that we could rely on and would know would be long-lasting, and we're confident of that. 
But what we really did was reach out to states, reach out to local communities. We actually got more than 4 million comments on our proposal. We went out and had hearings all across the country. We engaged the American public so that they would both learn and get information about climate change, but also be able to recognize that the path forward to address greenhouse gases state by state can be a mixed bag. It can be very different paths forward, but all of them can result in reducing greenhouse gases in a way that would keep costs low for our energy, as well as keep our energy system reliable. And it's been very exciting to see states beginning to shift and get renewable energy portfolio standards, to get energy efficiency standards, to invest in renewables even when they're not acknowledging fully 